that all the so-called heroes are truly terrorists and the real heroes are shown to the public as terrorists. Perhaps there's a little bit of the hero and the terrorist in our own selves. We need to think about these things before we talk about change. We need to understand our own selves before we understand the country. Here's a controversial figure, Yasin Abu Bakr. He led 114 members of a Muslim organization called the Jamaat al-Muslimin to enforce a coup d'etat, also known as a coup or overthrow of the government with military means. It was a sad day for the politicians involved, but I think it was a sadder day for the people who were suffering at the time in Trinidad and Tobago. Many forget that the coup did happen with supposed reasoning behind it. After all, the financial disparity in the people was horrid, and that closely resembles Trinidad State today in 2014 at the production of this documentary. Are we asking for another coup? I know that you're all wondering about that. This documentary chooses no sides and propagates no useless violence, but instead chooses to ask questions, questions which will help you. The questioning is a necessity to change because it is the questions that we have ignored or been distracted from for far too long. Questioning whether or not we want a new coup means that you are not truly focused on the situation because the real question is do we really know the story behind the coup that took place and what causes stuff like this to happen? Until we know that and it is made clear, we cannot judge what we need and what we don't need. Yes, the people understand that the country was in a horrible, horrible way and they wanted a change. But let us keep focused on the point that even though the citizens who lived in poverty needed a change, the Jamaat al muslimins were simply fighting for their rights as human beings to live in peace and harmony, independently. As Yasin Abu Bakr said in his Vice News interview, he was contacted by a woman who came into knowing about the drug trafficking of the government. They had her assassinated. They killed her. Not long after she came to Yasin Abu Bakr to speak of her plight. The knowledge which she learned of, she gave to him. And because of that, the government sicked their police on him and all of the Jamaat al muslimins unfairly, just because they knew about the corruption within the government. Seeing the state of the country and seeing their own plight, the Jamaat al muslimins then decided to fight back. We don't get told that story. Before you blame Imam Yasin Abu Bakr, why don't you look into these things? Why don't you venture forward and ask the questions to the people who were in it themselves? This documentary does not take the side of anyone, whether it be Dr. Kublal Singh or Yasin Abu Bakr, but it shows you where they are coming from. All we need to do is show a little bit more interest and become a little bit more involved in our country, in our own well-being, and ask the right questions in order to get the right answers. On that note though, I will personally state that I believe we need to be independent. Once we get in control of our food, our land, our shelter, our rights to self-defense, and all of our rights in a nice little spot, we will be good. We don't have to mess around with the government. But the unfortunate truth that I know is that those in the government who happen to be corrupt will mess with you. You don't have to go to them, they usually come to you. And why is that? Because the ones in government who happen to be corrupt do not like to see a group become independent of them. Do you know what that means? It means that that independent group is no longer a slave to the power structure. 
They don't want role models like you who are actually strong enough financially and in every way to form your own little village, your own little house. No, they want you as slaves to them. So I want to make it very clear that I am not pushing guns for violence. Instead, we should learn to see these guns as needed tools in defending from the individual entities who will use their own guns to separate you from your peace from your freedom outside of their power structure. And we did discuss the power structure in previous chapters. You not defending yourself shows that you are fine with being taken advantage of by someone who's willing to do it. I know many of you believe that if you sacrifice your life for a greater good as an innocent person who refuses to take up a gun, then that will live on as an example for the future Trinidadians to come. It will make some change, but the cycles and the structure will not change. The ones who are the corrupt in the government are truly psychopaths, and they do not care about your death, whether it's an innocent death or a guilty death, it doesn't matter to them whether you die or not. Will they ever stop? No, they won't. History has taught us that. The innocent sacrifices that you make in terms of dying without fighting for yourself are only giving the corrupt ones in government further chances to disrespect you. And remember this, they will always continue to disrespect you until you one day do not give them the chance to disrespect you. That's the only way that it stops. Your example will live on through the ages and one day all of Trinidad will one day form into an independent group and that group will protect itself with weapons so no corrupt policemen can take advantage. Then and only then will the government realize that no plot could ever take you down. Instead of plotting against you, what they will be saying in their minds is who God bless, no man shall curse. There must be a mainstream opinion, but there must also be an alternative opinion. And we as citizens need to go and find out both sides before we make our judgments. Jumping to conclusions is only done out of fear. And we must pose a question. Okay, look. It must be very scary to be around someone who has firearms. Yes, it must have been very dangerous to think about being around the Jamaat al muslimins at that time, even though they were supposedly using their weapons for just purposes. Now, I understand that all of that is very terrifying, but my question to you is, isn't it infinitely more terrifying to be the person who just allows corruption and allows starvation to happen? Put yourself in the situation of watching your own family, your own family suffer and die and come up with your answer. Perhaps it will take going to the ghettos or even becoming homeless before you truly feel the hurt. Can we get up off of our high horse and get down in the dirt? Get our hands dirty because that's the only way we can clean up this country. When we feel the pain, we might probably gain an experience so valuable that no amount of college degrees could ever equal it. A passion that no amount of money could ever quell up in our hearts. 